Uh, hi, guys. Uh, I'm sorry for this slight interruption. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to listen to my presentation. Uh, today, I will be talking about techniques for making a cool video about your game. Uh, you can use this knowledge whether you choose to make a game video on your own or whether you outsource uh, video production services. Uh, before we start, uh, let me ask you a question. Have you ever needed to make a video about your game? Uh, if so, or if you are planning to do so, uh, could you please just drop me a line in the chat? Uh, that way, uh, you and I can talk about the challenges and details of your specific case just right after the presentation. Well, a little about me. Uh, I'm Natalia Schuchman, and I work at Alkanost. Uh, what we do, we localize games and software into more than 70 languages and create game videos uh, for uh, videos for games and IT products. Uh, we started making videos specifically for games back in 2013, so it's eight years for now. Uh, we mainly produce trailer videos for the App Store, Google Play, and Steam, and teaser videos for publishing via advertising networks. Uh, but instead of telling you about our experience, let me show you a demo reel with highlights from some game videos that we at Alkanas have created over the last couple of years. Uh, Berkai, could you please launch a demo reel for us? Well, uh, so uh, now I think you know what we are doing. And let's, let's move on, on, uh, on to how we do it. Uh, but before we ex examine the topic in depth, uh, let me make an important clarification. Uh, a game video is an audiovisual, pro audiovisual production that must be coherent, cohesive, and holistic. And you cannot work on, the, on one part of the video uh, without taking into account uh, all the others. Uh, but in order to look behind the scenes and understand specific techniques, we will have to break down this holistic production into its uh, essential parts. And what I propose we do in the next 20 minutes is to stratify a video into four layers, as you can see on the screen. Uh, concept, video sequence, nar narrative, and animation. And uh, see what techniques uh, you can use when working on each of these layers. Uh, I understand it may seem a bit strange that I separate the concept from the narrative and the video sequence from the animation. But in the next 20 minutes, everything should become clear. Uh, if not, please don't hesitate to ask questions at the end. Well, let's start with the concept. Uh, think about what you will base your story on in the video. Uh, in other words, uh, at the very initial stage, think of what will form the framework, framework of your concept. There are lots of options here, but let me focus on three of them. Uh, option one is when you use the plot of the game as the conceptual basis of your video. So when you build the video concept, concept around the game world story with its key conflicts and objectives. Uh, it makes the video a sort of a guided tour of the game universe. Uh, to help explain what I mean, let's uh, watch a video that we made with this approach in mind. Uh, this is a trailer for a game called Altar War of Gods. Berkai, could you please launch it for us? Time ago, the ancient people built a great altar where the gods fight for the balance in the universe. But without the faith of the people, they are weakening. Choose a pantheon, honor your gods, and as a sign of gratitude from them, receive coins that harbor fragments of their power. Lay coins on the altar. Resurrect the ancient forces and use them in battles against your enemies. Make sacrifices and create new gods. Alter, join the battle. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, well, the secret of this video is that ideas are conveyed as linearly as possible. We did this intentionally because the video should be 100% understandable for the viewer who knows absolutely nothing about the game. If you decide to follow the same path, try to accept that your audience isn't familiar with the game universe at all. Uh, it can be really difficult for you to reduce a, a complex game plot to the simplest story possible, especially if you are making the video on your own, uh, because you and your team have invested hundreds of hours in creating the game universe and its features, and now you are trying to squeeze all this into one little video. Uh, just remember, your viewer doesn't have the background that you have. So just uh, a piece of advice, don't let your video concept become sidetracked or, or wandering off into various secondary storylines and just get enough topic. Uh, make it easy for the random viewer to wrap their head around the story your, tra your trailer is trying to tell them. Uh, of course, not every game has actually a game universe because th there are casual games, hyper casual games, just games with a simple gameplay that don't even have a plot. And for games like this, I would suggest the second option, where the core gameplay itself is used as a, as a springboard for the video concept. Imagine that the game is a piece of candy and the video is an, is an eye-catching wrapper. Uh, in this case, the video will show what the game actually looks like uh, and what the core gameplay mechanics are. But uh, the story told in the video, the story that frames the, the gameplay, it will be conceptually independent from the gameplay itself. Uh, we used this approach when creating the video for the game called Zahvat.io. Uh, but before we watch it, let me summarize it. Uh, a military general gives his subordinate the task of capturing enemy territory. But the subordinate becomes so carried away with this uh, that he decides to capture the general himself. Uh, now let's uh, see how we show this in the game trailer, Zahvat.io. I think you saw what I meant. Uh, in the middle, there was uh, just gameplay, but the story at the beginning and at the end, it lent to the gameplay an extra dimension. Uh, there is also a third option uh, to use the game's visual assets as a starting point for the concept. Here, you push off from the visual art you already have, uh, lending additional meaning to the existing graphics, which become a visual metaphor. Uh, this makes sense if your game is rich in visual art and you feel that you can squeeze more out of this wonderful visual material. Uh, well, let's say you have a lot of beautifully drawn characters, so why not build the plot of the video around their interaction? For example, they, in, in the video they can collaborate, compete, or fight. Uh, but in all honesty, this option works better for game teasers than for game trailers, uh, since the story it tells isn't likely to give the viewer a complete uh, picture of your game and its specific features. However, this technique could be considered for video advertising campaigns, where you need a lot of promotional clips with different meanings for different audiences. Uh, let's take a look at what a video with, anim with game art animation can look like. Let's watch Braveland Heroes video, Perkai. Now that we have sorted out uh, the concept, let's, uh, let's move on to the next part. It will be about the video sequence. Uh, here, uh, consider the following question. How can you order the video sequence from a technical point of view? Uh, uh, as you have just seen in the Brave and Heroes video, one option is to animate the existing art. But there are at least two more options, so let's check them out. Uh, 
In our experience, one of the most constructive techniques for showing game content is when you set up the scenes for the video uh, just right in the game, in game engine. Uh, here, instead of recording actual gameplay from the released build, you customize the visual content for each scene just directly in the environment where the game is developed. Uh, using this technique, you can make the camera or units move along to determine trajectories. You can relocate objects to improve the appearance of composition in the frame. You can adjust lightning, uh, lighting and much more. Uh, this method uh, lets you ensure that the picture conveys your concept as clearly and effectively as possible. Uh, in general, setting up scenes in the game engine results in considerable creative freedom and, uh, I would say, ideal picture quality. Uh, to give you an idea of what you can achieve with this technique in mind, let's watch a teaser trailer for the, for the game Broken Rail. But before we watch it, uh, let me tell a few words about the game. Uh, it's a puzzle performer with horror elements. Uh, and I'm proud to say that this, this video was published on the IGN channel and it currently has 175,000 views and more than 500 comments. So not, now let's watch the video for Broken Veil. Literally all scenes in the video we just watched were recorded from the game engine. Uh, but you are not limited to using this technique exclusively in your game video. Uh, you can also combine scenes of different origin in a single clip. In other words, you can customize some scenes in the game engine, record others uh, from uh, other scenes from the released build, and for some of the scenes you can just animate graphics. Uh, to make the result look visually consistent, it's a good idea to develop a visual style for the video that will pull all the scenes together. For, for example, you can use certain graphic elements in every scene, add the similar background images, uh, etc. Um, and you can even show several fragments on one screen at the same time. Uh, this will kill two birds with one stone. First, you will be showing the viewer more content, and by doing this, you will give them more reasons to fall in love with your game, or at least to become interested in it. And secondly, you will add variety to the video. Because if the viewer starts to get bored, they can just look at another part of the screen and maybe something from that part will resonate with them and make them keep watching. Uh, as an example of this technique, uh, let's uh, uh, watch a video for Taonga the Island Farm. The Island Farm looks like a true paradise. But you'll have to work hard for the farm to prosper. Take care of your farm and the crops and stock up for expeditions. Explore nearby islands and overcome all obstacles to bring harmony to the world. And you will discover secrets of the jungle and magic places. Start your adventure at Taunga, the island farm. Uh, so uh, now, you have, now you have some ideas for how to deal with the concept and for uh, presenting your game's content. But don't forget that in addition to the visual component, your game, also has a ver uh, your game video also has a verbal component. Simply put, it contains words uh, both written, and, uh, written in the frame and the read out loud by, by a voiceover artist. Uh, as a point of entry into the narrative layer, ask yourself the question, who actually tells the story in the video? On whose behalf is the story being told? Uh, sometimes the narrator may not be involved in the game events at all, 
the narrator could behave like an observer or an announcer. So he's someone outside the game universe, but he knows uh, a lot about it and is happy to share their knowledge. Uh, in general, this kind of storytelling is best suited to the videos with just a gameplay cut. Uh, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, because you can give the narrator a different and more immersive role, if you wish. For example, the narrator can be an eyewitness of the, of the events that are shown in the game video, and their personal experience uh, kind of affects their manner of narrating. Uh, to give you an example of how this works, let me show you the video for Wild West Steampunk, uh, Steampunk Alliance. And why, uh, when you will be watching and listening, Try to pay attention to the intonation of the voiceover artist and to the final phrase in the voiceover. Well, let's watch it now. To free land. Until they appeared. And then everything changed. War consumes our world. Now we are fighting to survive. And we shall remain standing only if united. We need you. Well, what the narrator sa uh, said uh, at the very end, it was, we need you. So this means that the storyteller associates himself with the game world and is asking the viewer for help. Actually, uh, it, in this example, the world itself uh, is talking through the voice of the narrator. Uh, catch, isn't it? Um, and there is one more first-person story storytelling technique uh, to pull the viewer more deeply into the story you are telling. This is when the protagonist or the main character of the game speaks on their own behalf and here the viewer by default agrees that the story told in the video is from the subjective point of view of a particular character and they see the, uh, the game video as uh, if through their eyes now let's watch an example of it metropolis looks obscure my name is john lockhart i just got out of jail a few hours ago and now i want to know why everything went down the way it did I am a bit tired of the violence, but I fear I have to resort to it. Got my revolver, long chains, and sturdy boots. At the end of the day, a strong pair of fists can kill you too. And yet, I don't consider myself a murderer. It's just that sometimes, there is no other way out. Still, you can always spend the evening with some beautiful woman. The city gives you the choice. You can live or you can die. Welcome to Metropolis. Well, even if there is no voice acting uh, in the video at all, uh, this doesn't mean actually that there is no narrator. Uh, I know this may sound uh, self-contradictory, so I'll elaborate. There is always a narrator. It's just that sometimes the narrator is silent. Uh, but the narrator still can express themselves, especially by means of written text, uh, such as captions or taglines in the frame. And I would say that written text uh, actually in a, in a game trailer is actually qu uh, quite uh, an effective technique. Uh, after all, viewers don't always follow the story in the video sequence uh, very attentively. And here, taglines and other written, text, uh, written texts is, uh, are your friends, uh, as they guide the viewers through the plot and highlight your key messages. Of course, sometimes the written text can be omitted. For example, if your video is not about a game, game's functionality, but about the story of the game universe, or if the video sequence itself is so absorbing and immersive that any written text would look simply out of place or superfluous. Uh, so now let's see what else you can do you can do so that your video not only stands out for its coherent concept attention grabbing video sequence and absorbing narration but is also just inexplic uh, in inexplicably catchy uh, without going into too much detail i'd like to focus on three uh, three most uh, most important factors as i see it. and uh, these factors will help you prioritize adjustments uh, at the animation production stage uh, without wasting time perfecting details that don't add much to overall picture. Uh, the three factors I mean are these. Uh, synchronizing the animation with the music, realistic physics, and camera agility. Uh, the first tip is to animate key events in the video sequence to the beat of the music. 
Uh, to do this, you need to select a background, uh, background music track for your video before you start working on the animation. Uh, then create a metronome for this, uh, this exact track and animate key actions in the frame uh, to the strong beats of the metronome. Uh, these key actions could, uh, could include the appearance of the main character, the winning shot, or just a scene change. Animating to the beat is a technique that seems almost invisible when you watch the final video. Uh, but uh, it is a fundamental principle in the motion design that gives the video a wow factor and just makes it immersive uh, because the picture and sound, they seem to echo each other and everything in the frame dances to the beat of the music. It's a subtle driving force behind the animation. Uh, the second tip is to take into account the realism of physics in the animation. Uh, for example, if something explodes in the frame, the camera could shake because the camera is located on site and is influenced by the same external conditions as other objects in front of the camera. And the third tip is to make the camera agile. Uh, for instance, if you have a character in your, in your video, it would be logical for the camera to keep them in the center of the frame at all times. And if the character is running, the camera could just follow them to keep the viewer's gaze from wandering. And uh, the camera zoom in uh, on details uh, is also a good technique to focus the viewer's attention on what is important. Well, it is these little things that create the magic of animation and make your video look holistic and powerful. Well, um, uh, now I'd like to, I would like you to have a look at the final video for my presentation. It's a, a video for Infinitor to game and all three techniques I mentioned, they are involved. Uh, try to pay particular attention to the animation, to the beat of the music, and the behavior of the camera. Okay, let's watch the final one. I think we managed to disassemble or stratify the video into the most important layers and we have taken a fairly close look at them but now let's uh, sh shift our focus to to an outside perspective what does a good uh, game video really need uh, when uh, what you are seeing right now on the slide um, there are um, kind of assessment criteria uh, you can use them for evaluating any game videos uh, whether made by your team outsourced or even when uh, watching trailers while looking for a game to play on the weekend well as you can see a game uh, a game video doesn't have any good game video doesn't have any secret ingredients to make a video cool it must be just produced thoughtfully professionally and with heart at all stages uh, the wow factor doesn't come out of nowhere it it has to be created proactively well, and before we say goodbye, I want to say that I, I would be glad to chat with those who listen to my presentation and tell you all more about what we do here at Alkanost. Uh, just reach out to me here or drop us uh, a line anytime. You can see the contacts on the screen. Uh, well, guys, uh, thank you for time and attention. Uh, and many thanks, Burkai, for launching all the video for us. Uh, guys, have a great time at the conference and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.